What's up guys, my name is Diego. Welcome back to another Coding Kaiju tutorial. In our last tutorial, we got our lasers to shoot, but they don't hit our asteroids. They don't interact with our asteroids. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that today. We're also gonna finish our core gameplay. Basically our game's gonna have our player shooting the asteroids and dodging them as if he's traveling through an asteroid field. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's open up our laser scene. Go ahead, open up the objects folder and double click to open it. And we wanna go over here uh, to the inspector window. I wanna click on the node tab. Because we're gonna use connect a signal. We're gonna use the body shape entered signal. And as you can read right here, it uh, detects when a physics body 2D um, enters uh, its shape. So our asteroids are physics bodies, so that's exactly what we're looking for. And we're going to connect the laser to itself. Go ahead and click connect. So this will be the function that's called when a laser hits one of our asteroids. So we're going to say if body, body referring to the physics body we're overlapping, is in group. We're going to say if it's in the group asteroids, then we want to print asteroid hit. Now before this will work, we need to put our asteroids in a group. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the asteroids scene. And go over here to the inspector window and make sure you're on the node tab. And instead of the signals, we're going to groups. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add all of our asteroids to a group called asteroids. This will help us distinguish later um, what our laser is hitting, just in case we add a variety of objects to shoot in our game. So let's go ahead and run this project. And when we shoot, uh, we get asteroid hit right here printed in the console. But only if our laser overlaps the asteroid. All right. Okay, let's make our asteroid react. So make sure you have the asteroid scene open. I'm going to right click and let's attach a script. And we're going to call our function explode. So this function explode is what's going to happen when an asteroid is destroyed. So the first thing we want to do is immediately remove the asteroid from the scene tree. So we're going to get its parent. I'm going to tell it to remove uh, the child itself. The asteroid is going to remove itself from the scene tree. And after that, it's going to queue up to be freed from memory. Whenever there's an idle idle processing time, um, Godot will then free any objects that have been queued freed. Now this would normally be good enough, but there's something you've got to watch out for when you're using queue free. Um, it doesn't free, uh, in this case, the asteroid immediately, like I said. So we don't want to encounter a scenario where this function explode is called on the same asteroid twice. So let's say two lasers are fired in quick succession. They hit the asteroid at the same time. Uh, this, the function explode will be called once and it'll queue free. And then it'll run the second time for the second laser hit and it'll be called again. But it may have already been freed. So to prevent this, we got to stop this explode function from running twice. So we're going to use a boolean for that. I'm going to call it is exploded. 
and we'll give it a value of false initially. So if the asteroid is exploded, then we just want to return. We don't want to continue running the rest of the function. But by for the first time it runs, it'll be false. And then we can, to make sure it doesn't run again, we can set it to true. That way this function runs only one time. Okay, so now that we have this explode function defined, we have to call it. So let's open up laser.gd again. And you can either uh, replace or just add uh, to this code. Uh, in my case, I'm just gonna replace it. And we're gonna say body and we're gonna call, call deferred. And that's the similar to the queue free. It'll um, wait till idle processing time to call this method. And I'm going to call the explode function on our asteroid. Now that we know that it's in the asteroids group, we know that it has, it has an explode function. So we'll call that. And then with the laser, we want to do the same thing. We want to remove it from the scene tree and queue free. So let's try running our project now. And shooting the asteroid will make it disappear. Okay. Now that we can shoot our asteroids, we're actually pretty close to completing our core gameplay. So let's continue down that path. In our final game, we want the asteroids to come flying towards the player down the screen, and the player must either dodge or shoot the incoming asteroids. So let's go ahead and implement that. Open up the game scene. And let's delete this asteroid from it. We're going to be adding asteroids through code from now on. So go ahead and select that game node. And we're going to add a new node of type node. You might have to scroll up. It's just a plain uh, node with the white uh, symbol. And we're going to rename that to asteroid spawner and just to keep things uh, organized we're going to save that as its own scene and we're actually going to create a new folder for this um, this asteroid spawner is not going to be an object in our world um, that you can you know see and interact with therefore we're going to categorize it as an entity we're going to create a new entities folder and save it in there. So let's go ahead and open that, open up that scene. Uh, click on the movie clapper icon. And let's attach a script. So we're going to call the ready function. It's a built in one. And we're going to say to spawn an asteroid. And that's going to be a function we have to define here. Funk underscore spawn asteroid. Uh, remember the underscore refers to functions that are uh, private. It's just a naming convention. Basically, it means we only want this function to be called from by our asteroid spawner. No other node or scene in our game should be calling this function. So let's go ahead and load up our asteroid scene and save that in a variable. Call this variable asteroid scene. And uh, just a quick tip, you can come over here down to your file system window. You can always just click and drag the object you want and it'll automatically fill in that file path for you. So let's create a new variable, asteroid. And I'm going to instance the asteroid scene. And 
and we want to set its position which is of course of type vector 2 just basically two values two coordinates coordinate value so let's make sure it's not on the edge of the screen so let's spawn it at minus or positive 50x And finally, we'll add it as a child and add it to the scene tree so that it appears in our game. So if we try running this now, we can see our asteroid spawns over here on the left side of the screen. But we want a lot of asteroids in our game and we want them to spawn at regular intervals. So we can use a timer node for that. So let's go ahead and add that and add a timer node. I'm going to rename that to spawn timer. And make sure you have the spawn timer selected and go over here to the inspector. And I'm going to turn on auto start. Control S to save. So go over here to the signals and on the timeout signal. I connect that to the asteroid spawner. So when the timer runs out, we want to spawn a new asteroid. So let's go ahead and call the spawn asteroid function. So when we run this, we'll have an asteroid spawn every second. And as you can see, they're starting to collide and overlap with each other, glitching out a little. So let's open up the asteroid scene again, and we're actually going to delete this wraparound node. We don't want our asteroids to wrap around. It causes, as you saw there, the, the glitching out uh, asteroids spawning on top of each other. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that. So what we actually want is our asteroids to spawn at the top of our game window in random, random spots. So we're actually going to create a new function for that. And I'm going to call it uh, underscore set asteroid position. And I'm going to give it an argument of asteroid. So in order to get um, our asteroids to spawn at random spots at the top, we're going to need to get the size of our viewport. So an easy way to do that is we're going to create a variable and call it rect for rectangle. And there's a simple get viewport function. And we're going to access the size property of that. And then we're going to set the size, or the position, I mean, of the asteroid that's passed in as the argument. So we're going to say the position of that asteroid is equal to the vector two. And we're gonna use a function called rand range. So rand range gets a random value um, in the range you give it. So we're gonna say we want a random value in between zero and the width of our viewport that's the x value so the x value of our asteroid position is going to be between zero and the width of our viewport and the y value we're going to actually set it to negative 100 so that it spawns off screen now we've got to make sure let's replace this and actually call our new function so set asteroid position And don't forget to pass it, uh, our asteroid that we defined here. So if we run the project now, you can see that every second, an asteroid is spawning at a random position off screen 
uh, within our viewport. And we can see our asteroids gently falling down, but we don't want that. We want our asteroids to, uh, you know, want them to be careening through space, traveling quickly. So in order for that to happen, we need to set their velocities. Go ahead and click on asteroid right here. We can see there's the linear velocities and the angular velocities. So we're actually gonna set that through code so that it's random. Reopen the asteroid spawner and we're gonna create a new function for this. Funk, I'm gonna call this set asteroid trajectory. Asteroid has an argument. I'm gonna say asteroid angular velocity equals a random number between four, uh, negative four and four. This will give the asteroid um, a natural spin as it's flying, so it's not so static as it falls. And we're gonna make sure to set the angular damp to zero. Uh, the damp uh, makes it makes the spin, the angular velocity slow down over time as if it was encountering air resistance, but um, you know, this game is set in space, so that won't be present here. So that's why we're setting that to zero. And I'm going to do the same thing for linear. So linear velocity. So linear velocity is an actually a, actually a vector two. So I'm going to give it a random number between uh, negative 300 and 300. Um, I played around with these numbers for a bit. 300 was a good value. So we're setting the y value to 300. So that means it's going to be uh you know shooting down falling down at a rate of 300 and by giving this a random value it um it'll set random diagonal uh trajectories so one last thing let's also set the linear damp to zero make sure to call our new function that asteroid directory trajectory and let's run the project and look at that it looks very natural some of them are getting random spin they're shooting off in random directions this is looking really good you can go around and shoot dodge Okay, just like before with the lasers, um, when the asteroid leaves the viewport, we need to free it so that our game is not just endlessly consuming memory. So similar to, similar to before, let's open up the asteroid scene. We're gonna add that same node, the visibility notifier 2D node. Go ahead to the signals and viewport exit. When it exits the viewport, connect that to our asteroid node where our script is. Basically, we're going to say if the player didn't shoot it and it just falls off the bottom, um, we're just going to queue free it. All right, we're at a pretty good place right now. In the next video, we're going to add a lot of polish to what we have. We're going to have the asteroids, you know, actually explode instead of just disappear. We're going to add sound effects, all the good stuff. So subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. Um, make sure to like the video as well. And as always, thanks for watching.